So in the first question of this third exercise, we'll have to draw graphs for the following set of tables of values with suitable scales on the axis. Let us take the first table on the canvas. So here in A part of this question, we have the cost of apples and we'll also have the number of apples. So using these values, we'll have to draw a line graph on a graph sheet. So let us consider a graph sheet where we have already marked the X axis as the number of apples and the Y axis as the cost in rupees. So if we plot these points on this graph sheet, we'll get a line graph like this. Let us first write the scale of both the axes. So as we observe the X axis first, we see that these small boxes are counted as units. So we see that for X axis, we have taken five units and those five units represents one apple. Similarly for Y axis, if we take the scale, we see that five units on the Y axis. So basically five units on the Y axis represents rupees five. And these are the points which we have taken from this table to get this line graph. So this is how we are going to answer the first part of this question. Let us now see the next tables of values. Now in this part, we have distance traveled by a car. So basically time in hours and the distance in kilometers, these two things are given. We'll have to use these two things to plot a graph. Also then based on our observation of the graph, we'll have to answer the questions that follows. Let us first plot these values on this graph. Well, as you can see, we have already taken the time in hours on the X axis and the distance in kilometers on the Y axis. So if we take up these values and we plot the line graph, so we'll get this as the line graph based on the values which we have got here. So let us first mark the scale of both the axis. So first let us consider the X axis. If we consider the scale of the X axis, we see that these small units would be representing or will help us to get the scale. So basically there are eight units on the X axis and the eight units together represents one R on the X axis. Let us now take the Y axis into consideration. So for Y axis, we again have eight units and these eight units represents 40 kilometers on the Y axis. Now let us answer the questions that follows in this part of the question. So basically we'll have to find the distance the car covered during the period 7.30 a.m. and 8 a.m. So from this table, we already have seen that the car covered 120 kilometers at 8 a.m. till 8 a.m. So let us find out how many kilometers the car covers at 7.30 a.m. So we see that eight units corresponds to one hour. So to mark half an hour, we'll have to take four units from 7 a.m., which would be this point on the x-axis. Now four units from 7 a.m. would be this point from the x-axis. And if we have to measure the distance will have to intersect this line 
at this point and this point represents this point on the y-axis which is this and if you observe this point this is exactly in the middle of 80 and 120 hence we see that at 7 30 am the car will cover 100 kilometers so between 7 30 am and 8 am the car has covered 20 kilometers that's the difference of 120 and 100 so to answer the first part you can say that the car has covered 20 kilometers to answer the second part of the question where they want us to find the time when the car had covered a distance of 100 kilometers since it starts so we just saw that at 7 30 am the car covers 100 kilometers since its start so let us now move on to the next tables of values Since in C part of this question number one, we have been given interest on deposits for a year where this row has the deposits in rupees and this has the simple interest in rupees. And then it is followed by the questions which we can answer after we have got the graph on this sheet where we see that we have already taken the x-axis as the deposit in rupees and the y-axis as the simple interest in rupees and if we just plot this point we'll get this line graph so let us first take the scale of the axis so if we take the scale of the axis and for x-axis if we take for x-axis we see that taken five units on x-axis which represents a thousand rupees in deposit so five units represents a thousand rupees and on y-axis we observe the y-axis we see that we have taken four units which represents 80 rupees of simple interest so these are the scales of both the axis now let us answer the questions that follows in this part so the first question says whether the graph passes through the origin so if we extend this line if we extend this line we'll see that this line passes through the origin for sure Hence, to answer the first part or the first set of questions, we can say yes, it passes through the origin. Let us now move on to the next part. It says that we'll have to use the graph to find the interest on 2500 for a year. So basically, as we know that if we are going to deposit 2500, we'll have to take the reference of x-axis where 5 units corresponds to 1000. So basically two and a half units will correspond to 500 from 2000 rupees, which would be somewhere here. Now, if we consider a line to get the corresponding point on the Y axis, so it would be this point on the Y axis, which if we see is exactly in the middle of 160 and 240 hence it would be 200 so we can say that the interest on 2500 for a year would be rupees 200 let us now see the last question of this part where we'll have to find out the money deposited in order to get an interest of rupees 280 per year so as we see that four units on y-axis corresponds to 80 rupees so from 240 we just need 40 rupees which means two units so two units would be again in the middle of 240 and 320 so we'll take 
the help of this line to mark a point on this line graph and eventually we'll get this point on the x-axis which will give us the amount deposited to get a to get an interest of rupees 280 so basically this is two units away from 3000 so five units corresponds to 1000 one unit on x-axis would then so if five units corresponds to 1000 from here we can calculate how much would one unit corresponds so one unit would be rupees 200 so two units would be rupees 400 so 400 rupees or two units from 3000 hence to get an interest of 280 the money that should be deposited in the bank should be 3400 so this is how we can observe the values in the table we can draw the graph answer the question that follows and this is how we are going to answer the first question of this third exercise. To learn more about how QMath can help you crack school and board exams, explore QMath Leap, a live online classroom program run by highly experienced and committed teachers.